Hello, welcome to another virtual session here with the Workers' Compensation Board of Prince Edward Island. You will be sitting in for the Health and Safety Committee Basics course. My name is Erin Carver. I'm an Occupational Health and Safety Education Consultant here at WCB. So today we'll be together for about 40 minutes or so. Um, please feel free to follow along, jot down any questions or concerns that you might have. And at the end of this presentation, there will be a final slide with my contact information, my email, as well as my contact number. So sit tight and we'll begin. <clears throat> So the agenda for today looks a little like this. We're going to talk a little bit about the occupational health and safety legislation and what that looks like on Prince Edward Island. We'll also discuss the internal responsibility system and due diligence and what that looks like and what it is. As for committee basics, we're going to talk a lot about uh, what a committee looks like. When do I need a committee? Does my workplace need a committee? What are some of the roles and responsibilities as a member? and how can I run an effective meeting and what does that look like? We'll also discuss workplace hazards, workplace investigations and inspections, and what an effective recommendation would look, for, look like. Before we begin, I will just um, touch a little bit on the OHS legislation app that we have here through Occupational Health and Safety at Workers' Compensation Board. Um, as you can see, it's available for Google Play as well as on the App Store. Uh, it's a great resource to have at your fingertips. There is a number of topics online as well as a variety of resources for each topic. So I highly recommend a download um, of our new app. To begin, I'm going to share a little bit about WCB and occupational health and safety here. The legislation that really outlines the OHS standards on PEI and what those are. And we'll discuss a little bit about the internal re responsibility system, which is basically the foundation of occupational health and safety legislation. So the Workers' Compensation Board or WCB is responsible for workplace safety legislation on Prince Edward Island. The legislation is laid out in the Occupational Health and Safety Act as well as its general regulations. And really those two pieces of legislation are just describing the minimum standard that we expect of occupational health and safety here on PEI in PEI workplaces. The Internal Responsibility System or the IRS as it's known sometimes, is really the foundation of occupational health and safety legislation. So this system places responsibility on everyone in the workplace for controlling those workplace hazards. So oftentimes we'll hear, oh, I'm not on the safety committee, or maybe I'm not the safety rep in my workplace, so occupational health and safety has nothing to do with me. So that really couldn't be any further from the truth. Um, as you'll see here, the IRS puts the onus on everybody in the workplace. And it says here at the bottom, those closest to the work will provide the most valuable input into maintaining a safe uh, work environment. So we want to make sure if you're on the committee and you're doing those inspections, you have those discussions with the people that are doing the duties or the tasks daily. They're the ones that are going to know how can we improve this task or how can we make it safer. Um, and they'll, they'll know each step of the way so that we can gain compliance and work safely in our workplace. So in hand in hand with the IRS is also due diligence. And when we talk about due diligence, we're really just ensuring that anyone responsible for health and safety is taking all the reasonable steps or precautions to make sure nobody at work gets injured or is ill on the job. Everyone in the workplace is required to be due diligent due diligent, much like the IRS system. Everyone's required to report hazards, to work safely, and when we talk about due diligence, um, due diligence is really demonstrated by your actions before an event occurs. So what are we doing to make sure nobody gets hurt? How can we prevent injuries and illness in the workplace? Due diligence requires employers to establish an OHS safety program. And a safety program really just shows us, you know, here at 
occupational health and safety, that you're able to identify the hazards, you know the risks at the workplace. And when we talk about due diligence, we want to make sure that we're able to prove that we've taken all the reasonable steps to protect workers in the workplace. So when we talk about due diligence, we talk about the three words you see below, foreseeability, preventability, and control. So foreseeability, you know, could somebody predict or foresee that something could go wrong? Preventability, is there an opportunity or was there an opportunity to prevent an injury or to prevent this incident from happening in the workplace? Control, who has the ability or who had the responsibility to prevent an injury or to prevent an illness or incident from occurring? So we wanna make sure we're able to answer those questions and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can in the workplace within reason to protect our workers. Employer responsibility. So this is just straight out of our Occupational Health and Safety Act. And I'll try and sum it up nicely. Um, the first thing it says here is to provide a healthy and safe workplace. So of course, the main goal is to get the job done, but to make sure that our workers are going home safely, happy at the end of the day. We wanna make sure that we're able to provide instruction and training and the proper supervision so that people know how to work safely on the job. And we wanna make sure that the equipment and the materials uh, and the different tools that they're using on the work, work site are maintained and they're used properly and that you know it's reported to an employer if something was wrong. Employers are supposed to address potentially hazardous situations. So if something's brought forward, um, it should be dealt with in a timely manner by the employer. And the employer must establish and maintain an occupational health and safety program and policy. And both of these need to be updated annually. And that can be done with the support of your safety committee. We also want to support the safety committee or the representative in the workplace, and that can be done by making sure that we're hosting our safety committee meetings. It can be done by ensuring that incident investigations occur and that uh, workplace inspections are being completed. And lastly, it says here, we're going to report any serious incidents to WCB. Worker responsibility. So same as the last slide, this one's also taken straight out of the act. No one follow the health and safety policy and requirements on your work site. So we should have a competent person to be able to identify any hazards or risks in the workplace for these workers um, and let them know how to work safely uh, within the workplace around these hazards. Correct any unsafe condition or immediately report it to the supervisor. So if you see something out there and you're sure it's going to endanger your, yourself or cause illness or injury to somebody else, make sure it's being reported to somebody who has the responsibility and the authority to address the situation. Lastly, it says here, you're gonna cooperate with your employer, our committee and the safety rep as required. So. Um, it might look like, you know, having those discussions on the floor if people are out doing their workplace inspections. It's knowing that I have to report any unsafe conditions or any issues in the workplace. And those are the ways you can, you can work responsibly and cooperate with your employer and your committee. Did you know that workers have rights? Did you know that there are three basic, work, three basic rights of the worker? You have the right to know, you also have the right to participate, and you have the right to refuse any unsafe work. When we talk about the right to know, uh, what we really are trying to say is that you do have the right to know the hazards of the job, any risks that are taken when you're at work. Um, and we should, like I said previously, have somebody competent, a supervisor, manager, employer, uh, to tell people and show people and demonstrate to people how to work safely in the workplace. You also have the right to participate. So participation can come in many forms. So you have the right to be on the uh, safety committee. You also have the right to be involved in any safety inspections or workplace inspections. You also have the right to be the safety rep in your workplace if that's something that interests you as well. Um, but we also have the right to uh, report any unsafe conditions um, and that would be working due diligently and to be sure that we're reporting any unsafe conditions or hazards so that you don't get hurt or so that nobody else in the workplace uh, gets hurt or injured on the job. And lastly, you do have the right to refuse. So the work refusals um, can be a little bit tricky 
Um, there is a process to follow in our Occupational Health and Safety Act. And I would recommend having a peek at that. But um, when we talk about the right to refuse, we're really just saying that if there was a situation or a hazard in the workplace that could cause you to become ill or to become injured on the job or for anyone else to become ill or injured at the workplace, then you have the right to refuse. So we're going to go into what is a safety committee and what that looks like. And really, it's just a group of worker and employee representatives who are coming together uh, to address any health and safety issues that may they may have in their workplace. So on Prince Edward Island, we do state in our act that if you have uh, 20 or more workers at your workplace, you must have a safety committee established in that workplace. The committee side is, is really just decided by each employer in each workplace. Membership has to be at least one half worker representative. So those people shouldn't have any managerial responsibilities and they must be selected by the workers. The other half though, must be made up of employer representatives. What's the role of the committee? The role of the committee is to facilitate communications and discussions on different health and safety issues. And the committee really provides this wonderful link between management and staff. So they're able to come to solutions together. Um, the solutions are should be practical um, and they should be easy to implement and easy to follow for the staff and, and for workers in the workplace. Committee responsibilities. So these are some of the responsibilities that we expect of the committee. Um, these are taken straight out of the act as well. So we expect that they're going to, to meet at least once per month and have those uh, meeting minutes posted on the Occupational Health and Safety Board for others to view. And they must establish a rules or procedure. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that later. Um, the rules of procedure might also be known as the terms of reference. We expect that they're going to participate in regular workplace inspections to help identify any hazards um, or risk in the workplace and take part in incident investigation. So if there was an incident or an accident that occurred in the, in the workplace, we wanna investigate it, figure out why it happened, how it happened, and what we're gonna do to make sure that it do doesn't happen again. Make recommendations to the employer for improvement on health and safety issues. So we'll talk a little bit about how to make an effective recommendation uh, later in the presentation, but we want to make sure that the recommendations are clear and concise and the employer has an opportunity to see um, a number of recommendations, if possible, with the pros and cons of each of those. And lastly, we're going to encourage workers to report hazards and concerns. So we wanna make sure that people feel comfortable in their workplace to report any issues, any hazards, um, any concerns that might arise. Supporting health and safety. So we know here at Occupational Health and Safety that talking to workers regularly, regularly is one of the best ways to promote health and safety. There are many ways to promote health and safety in your own workplace, and they can be fun and engaging as well. So things that we often see here, we see postings of signs that are going to draw attention to different safety issues specific to your workplace. Uh, there's different ways of creating awareness through safety workshops or through education sessions or different types of seminars. Uh, and we encourage workers to report things that might seem, seem unsafe or work that may cause injury or illness. And we recognize workers who exhibit safe behavior. So there are a number of ways to recognize that. One workplace in, uh, specific to me that I know of, um, they fill out each shift that they work, they fill out a couple cards. So one thing people did well and one thing um, that did, people did well in the eyes of occupational health and safety. So at the end of the week, they kind of tally those up and send out an email and they'll share um, any work workers that went you know, above and beyond the health and safety standards. What does an effective committee look like and what does an effective member look like on that committee? So an effective member is a person that's always ready to listen to different concerns in the workplace of other workers. 
They're always going to be the leaders of occupational health and safety. So they're going to use safe work practices. They're going to follow all those safety rules. They have proper training to complete their member duties and they know what their duties are and they work within those limits. They ensure that all unsafe equipment and conditions are identified and addressed appropriately and in a timely manner. These people should really be dedicated to resolving occupational health and safety con concerns in their workplace and they don't exceed their authority. So what that means is that they're not the health and safety police, but they are there uh, to bring awareness to the hazards in the workplace and to bring up any recommendations or issues to the employer from, from workers. And lastly, they'll seek help in situations that are out of their control. So if they can't fix that issue there on the spot, they'll reach out to somebody who has the authority or has the responsibility to do so. Committee evaluation. How do you know if your committee is functioning effectively? In order to continually approve, uh, we want to make sure that we have some measure of our past performance. So what can we do to ensure that we're functioning properly and effectively? Um, we want to be able to recognize weak areas and strengthen efforts regarding those areas. So the best way to do this is to compare the work that the committee has done to the functions that they're actually required by law to carry out. So are they able to complete tasks and duties that others and the law expect of them? And if they're not able to, where are they lacking and what is going to be done to improve in those areas? Getting started. So we're going to talk a little bit in this section, um, how to be effective and how to be efficient as a committee as a whole. So we're going to talk about committee um, roles and understanding those and what they look like creating and maintaining a rules or procedure or terms of reference. And we're gonna talk a little bit about scheduling meetings and having those meeting needs available and what the importance of agenda meetings can mean for your safety committee. And lastly, we'll talk quickly a little bit about records and statistics. Within a committee, there are a variety of roles that need to be filled and each role will have its own specific duties. So we're gonna discuss a little bit about the employer representative, the chairperson, the secretary and members and what those duties and roles include. So the employer representative, this person is going to, these people are going to ensure that the committee is following the rules of procedure and we're going to discuss that uh, very shortly. Grant members the paid leave necessary to complete those duties as a committee member and for any other training that's necessary. We're also going to grant members the opportunity to accompany one of our occupational health and safety officers through an inspection and anybody else that's doing an inspection in the workplace. And lastly, we're going to ensure requests are addressed within 30 days. So they have a legal obligation to make sure that any recommendations requests are addressed and replied to within 30 days. The chairperson. So this person's really going to arrange and organize and lead the committee meetings. So you want to make sure you appoint someone that's able to um, guide the discussions toward definite conclusions. They're able to keep people on track in a meeting. And this person's also going to report on the status of suggestions or different recommendations and assigned projects to different members. So when something's assigned, um, we should have a name and a completion date with that to help hold people accountable. And lastly, we're going to make sure that the committee is operating as well within its rules or procedures. The secretary, so this person's going to compile the agenda and prepare the minutes of the meeting. So once those meeting minutes are approved, we're gonna make sure that they're distributed and posted somewhere, uh, preferably on your occupational health and safety board in your workplace. This person will also have any reports or correspondence available as necessary for the occupational health and safety committee. And they'll point out any items recorded in past minutes that might need some follow up or a little bit more discussion to come to a, a conclusion. And lastly, um, they'll assist the chairperson with any extra duties as required.
members. So we're hoping that all members um, are regular, regular in their attendance to their meetings. Um, they are expected to participate in workplace inspections um, and any workplace ins investigations if there was an incident that came up or occurred. They have to receive and investigate any complaints about safety in the workplace. And once that's done, they're going to report any unsafe hazards or conditions that could affect the well-being of workers in the workplace. They're also going to work safely. And like I said before, they're kind of the leaders of occupational health and safety in the workplace. Um, so people will kind of copy what they do. Um, and that's our hope that they'll be able to come work safely and come up with uh, corrective recommendations when necessary. And lastly, they'll contribute to the workload um, or any discussions in the meetings. So rules of procedure or terms of reference, sometimes it's known as, is really just the committee establishing rules that lay out how they're going to perform their duties and their function. Rules of procedure or also known as the terms of reference defines the scope and the mandate of the committee. And it can kind of be referred to if there is any disagreements or disputes, they'll go back to that um, to ensure they're following the rules or procedures. So some of the things that should be included in your rules of procedure are the name of the committee. So give yourself a name that's easily recognized in within the workplace. They should also have a statement of purpose. So why the committee has been established and what the goals of the committee are. We should lay out the composition and the membership. So who's going to serve in the committee and how long are they going to serve for? How will members be selected and what's the process for appointing any alternates? And what's the process for replacing a committee member? So those are some of the things that you'd have laid out in the composition and membership section. Roles and responsibilities. So the roles and responsibility of the committee members have to comply with the Occupational Health and Safety Act. They might include things like the processes for making recommendations to the employer, the process for workers to submit OHS concerns to committee members, and how the committee will monitor the safety program and the committee for its effectiveness. The role committee members play also in inspections, investigation, hazard identification should also be laid out in this section as well. Um, we also want to make sure that we have some space for committee training. So committee members should be trained to ensure that they're um, an effective and efficient committee. Um, some things that you might be trained on as a committee member might be how to perform a workplace inspection, hazard identification, incident investigation and addressing complaints. Committee meetings. So we do expect regular meetings and regular attendance are encouraged. Committees also must establish a rules or procedure specific to their workplace and should lay out the following in this section. How often the committee will meet, how long they're going to meet for, uh, the roles of the committee members prior to and during the meeting, meeting minute, posting requirements and where and when we're going to meet. And lastly, we're gonna talk a little bit about records and statistics. So the committee must keep accurate records of all activities um, and items addressed related to occupational health and safety. So things that they may include would be meeting minutes or meeting agenda, a list of the committee members and their contact information, any incident or hazard reports, any recommendations or corrective actions and any training records from the committee. Scheduling the meeting. All committee members should be notified at least two days in advance of the meetings. They have to know the time and the place and the date that they're meeting. Uh, one recommendation that I would have is to have a standing committee meeting so that you know, maybe it's every second Tuesday of the month, your safety committee's meeting and you know where they're meeting. And then that way there's no conflict with uh, worker schedules. After the meeting, the meeting minutes are required to be posted. Agenda and meeting needs. So it is really important to have an agenda. It's something that you can stick to and follow throughout the meeting so that people stay on track and conversations stay on track. It's just a great way to have that organization and a format for that meeting. 
We also want to make sure that we have all the appropriate space and materials and equipment needed to ensure that it, we, we run an effective meeting. So we want to make sure we have notebook, notebooks, pens, file folders, anything that we need for a presentation, computer, projector, those types of things. What needs to be included in a meeting agenda? So these are some of the basic things that are included in agenda. Uh, a roll call approval of the minutes from the last meeting that you've had. Any unfinished business, you wanna make sure that you're able to wrap that up. Um, it can be uh, difficult when different topics or any business is carried over from meeting to meeting. So you wanna make sure you're able to finish that up. If there's any occupational health and safety topics for discussion. So it might be things like reviewing complaints or incidents. It could be any reviews of inspection reports. Um, it could be talking about some updated training for occupational health and safety or any new assigned reports for the committee. So if there's anything new that you'd like to add at the end, that's where the new business comes in. Um, if anything needs to be addressed, you want to make sure that you're assigning people to the tasks and giving them a completion date to hold them accountable. And once that's all finished and through with, the meeting can be adjourned. Records and statistics. Records and statistics really help to identify the nature, extent, and cause of health and safety hazards in the workplace. It really is important to make sure that you have accurate data. When you have accurate data, um, it helps to identify and determine whether or not corrective actions or control measures are working like they're supposed to be working. So records and statistics can help to identify specific work locations or different tasks in the workplace where there's a high risk of injury. So once we're able to identify that, then we can move on to prevention and focus on what we can do to make sure that people aren't going to be injured or um, no incidents will occur in those areas or of the workplace. Confirm that the workplace inspections and testings are being conducted as required. So the more, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next section, but um, the more dangerous the tasks or the work at the work site, the more frequent the inspections should be. Confirm that incident investigations are being conducted. So we want to have some proof and some record of that. And records and statistics also help track any corrective actions that were taken to remedy hazards identified. So we can also look back through our minutes to see when the corrective actions were taken and what were those corrective actions. And lastly, it helps identify opportunity for any training or education that might be needed for staff, but also for members of the committee. Understanding hazards. So when we talk about workplace hazards, we really just mean any situation or any condition or thing that's really going to put workers' uh, occupational health and safety in danger. So keeping workers healthy and safe involves identifying both health and safety hazards. So some of the different types of workplace hazards that we talk about. Um, are the six that are listed here. So biological things like bacteria, viruses, insect or animal bites, chemicals, fumes, um, vapors, flammable materials and pesticides are all in that category. Ergonomics, so lifting heavy objects, poor posture, repetitive movements, improper setup of workstations. So we'll probably see a lot of that in the next little while, I would assume, after everybody was kind of shifted home quickly during COVID and not having the proper workplace set up, um, not having the proper um, computer set up or chairs at, at their home. Physical hazards in the workplace include things like sunlight, extreme temperatures, and loud noises. Psychosocial, so that's the stress, that's the emotional or verbal abuse, that's the harassment piece. And lastly, safety. Slipping and tripping hazards, inappropriate machine guarding or no machine guarding, um, any equipment malfunctions or breakdowns. 
So how can we control workplace hazards? This here is the hierarchy of controls. And as you can see from the legend on the left, um, the very top of the hierarchy is the most effective. And then we work our way down to the red, the PPE, where it's least effective. So I'm just going to quickly go through this um, with an example of working at heights. So the first section there, elimination in the blue, we're talking about physically removing that hazard. So if we're working at heights, what kind of tasks could be done at ground level? Um, could we finish those tasks at ground level before we have to get up on a lift, a scissor lift or a ladder? Substitution, so really replacing the hazard. What does that mean if you're working at heights? So we could replace uh, step ladders with permanent or secured ladders to remove that risk of ladders tipping over or steps failing. Engineering controls, isolating people from the hazard. So things that we can do is add tow boards or guardrails to workspaces at heights. So these are physical, but they're also visible barriers that are going to prevent falls. Administrative controls, provide workers with specific training or education. Um, and really change the, pay, the way people work. So if it was working at heights, we could provide those workers with fall protection training um, from a recognized service provider in the area. And lastly, protect the worker with PPE or personal protective equipment. So provide workers with the appropriate, appropriate PPE to complete the work. So they should have a, a harness if they're working at height, lanyards, secure anchor points or lifelines. And this PPE should, as all PPE should, uh, fit properly, be maintained, and be inspected regularly. Workplace inspections and incident investigations. Workplace inspections. The rules or procedures for the committee and the health and safety program should state the frequency and number of inspections that we require on the committee. So what's the purpose of the of an inspection? It's really just to identify hazards and recommend any corrective actions before an incident or an accident occurs in the workplace. So it's preventative measures. It may examine a select work area or a particular, particular hazard, different types of machinery or tools or equipment that are used on the job. And we can also use a, a checklist and discuss with workers in the area being inspected. They can certainly help with um, establishing a thorough inspection or completing a thorough inspection. The committee should come up with an inspection schedule appropriate for their workplace. So like I said before, the more likely um, an injury or the higher the risk, the more frequent, frequent a workplace inspection should be. Things to think about when you're doing your workplace inspection. Make sure that all proper PPE is available to workers at the work site. Encourage workers to follow safe work procedures. Make sure that your workers know about those safe work procedures and make sure they have some education, some knowledge, and some training of those procedures. Proper maintenance and storage of materials, equipment, and machinery. So make sure that you're putting things away at the end of the day. Um, make sure that there's proper housekeeping. Everything has a spot and a location to be put away for, at the end of the day. Appropriate signage and functional lighting. So you want to make sure that people know they have to wear uh, certain, certain PPE in certain locations of your work site and make sure they have the functional lighting to get the job done safely. There should be up-to-date inspections on equipment and machinery. So you're going to check for that. You want to make sure that you're conducting your inspections at peak pr uh, production time. So make sure that you're not doing it for 05 when everybody leaves the work site. You want to be able to have those interactions with, with workers and those dis important discussions. But also you want to make sure that you're able to see workers in action and see how they're completing their tasks. Check the safety board for any updated materials and safety training. And I will just put a little plug in for it. For us here, um, we do have a lot of materials and resources available on our website and through that app as well. And lastly, record and bring forward any issues and concerns. So that's, I think, been stated more than once or twice throughout the presentation. So you wanna make sure that 
um, other workers, not just members of the committee are, are feeling comfortable enough to bring forward any concerns that they have in the workplace. Incident investigations. The investigation is a little bit different than the workplace inspection. The investigation is really an after the, the fact response, whereas the workplace inspection is a preventative measure. So when we talk about um, incident investigation, it's really just a process that's going to um, uncover hazards or problems that exist in your workplace and why it happened. So we want to make sure we understand what happened, why it happened, um, and make sure it doesn't happen again. So to determine these steps, um, the first few things you're going to do is gather the information. So you're really going to examine the work site. You're going to preserve any evidence that's there, identify and interview any witnesses that may have seen what took place and what happened, and review any other health and safety related documents. Next, you're going to analyze the information. So review the facts about what happened, figure out why it happened and how it happened. Drawing conclusions is next. So really just writing out a step-by-step -step account of what took place in the workplace. And lastly, making recommendations. So any recommendations that you do come forward with should be realistic, concise, and identify the contributing factors. Appropriate recommendations should prevent this from re reoccurring again in your workplace. Effective recommendations. Oftentimes recommendations will need to be brought forward after an incident or an inspect or inspection. Committees that establish and follow a process for making recommendations are better, better prepared to make timely suggestions that support the health and safety initiatives in their workplace. So when we talk about making an effective recommendation, we want to make sure that we have a description of the issue. We need to include some background information if necessary. And if possible, we could have some regulatory references. We also want to make sure that it's clear and concise, that there's practical solutions to the problem. We don't want to um, create more problems by putting forward a recommendation. We want to make sure that workers understand it and they know the steps to ensure that um, their recommendations are practical, but they're easy to follow. We must include all the information the employer needs to make a decision. So we might want to we might want to include the pros and the cons of that um, recommendation. So we could offer more than one option if that's available. And lastly, we want to include a timeline for completion. So making sure we have a timeline holds people accountable, but also other people in the workplace that aren't on the committee would also like to know, you know, when should this be completed by and when can I expect um, or when can I expect a reply from the employer. So um, in conclusion, Committees need a few things for success. We want to make sure we have that strong commitment by our employer, and that can be done through policies or their actions and procedures. And we want to make sure that we have the interest and involvement of workers in the workplace. So having a positive attitude about occupational health and safety um, really affects the success of the health and safety committee. So finally, it's really been my pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for tuning in to our webinar here today and for your commitment you've shown for protecting health and safety in your workplace. If there's any questions, please contact me. Um, I will have my slide up there with my contact information. But for now, this is me signing off from the OHS division of the Workers' Compensation Board. See you soon.